Morning, everyone. Thank you for doing your devotions with me today. We are in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord God, we thank you so much that we can come to you today, just one day before Christmas, oh, Lord God, to be able to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. And we know, Lord God, that this is a special day in the calendar for us because, Lord God, we are looking ahead to know, Lord God, that you have sent your Son because of your great love for us, Lord. And so today, as we consider Isaiah, Lord God, we pray that the words may pierce our hearts, O Lord God, and bring us to repentance, bring us hope, bring us, O Lord God, to the heart of peace, O Lord God, so that we may truly be filled by you. We thank you so much, O Lord God, that you are with us, that even now, Lord God, you're speaking to us through your living word. We thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9, it says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and of might, the spirit of the knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decides by what decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on, my holy, on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Um, as we read this passage, clearly this is a messianic passage where it just kind of uh, prophesies about Jesus. And um, the shoot that will come up from the stump of Jesse is referring to the lineage of David and it being that, um, you know, Jesus is the force for proclaimed um, Messiah that comes from the lineage of David Um and it says that his roots, from his roots, a branch will bear fruit, right? So this is, this is what he's saying, that through David, there will be a new branch that will bear fruit. And of course, we know that he is Jesus. And I love these descriptions of who Jesus is. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of, of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, like it's, it's kind of proclaiming who Jesus is and his qualities of, as the Messiah, but also as the Son of God and as our Savior and our King. Um, I wanted us to just kind of think on the very last portion. The last portion talks about the future, um, talks about how in the future, now e even including our future, in verse 6, it says, The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down, the goat, the calf, and the lion and the yearling together. A little child will lead them. And he talks about how there will be peace, right? There were going, there's going to be a restoration of the peace that God initially intended and in the Garden of Eden, where all the animals and all of creation was at peace with one another. And so it gives us this realization um, that this is what the Messiah is beckoning in into this world. But I love that at the end, it says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Like the reason why there is peace, the reason why there is going to be this restoration is because of the knowledge of the Lord that covers the earth, that all the world will finally know Jesus as Lord, as Messiah, right? And it may be, for some, it may be too late, and we don't want that to happen. And that's the reason why, you know, we have this desire to proclaim the gospel. 
But that's what this is saying, that what's lacking in this world today, and we feel it so much, right? This disruption um, as a result of sin, as a result of our brokenness. There's like this constant disruption of peace and disruption of harmony in this world. And the reason for that, now we can have in our minds a, a various list of people. You know, it's this person's fault because they're selfish or that person's fault, whatever it may be. You know, this person may have hurt you or whatever it may be. And so that's the reason why in our minds there's a disruption of peace. But really what this passage is saying is what's lacking is the knowledge of the Lord. And so what we can best do to overcome these things then is to proclaim the Lord um, as the waters cover the sea. That's our calling. That God would use us to proclaim him throughout the world that the knowledge of the lord would be over all the earth as the waters cover the sea let's pray together father we thank you so much for this word we pray O oh lord god that it would lead us to action O oh god lead us to knowing and loving you with all of our hearts O oh god we thank you so much that you are with us Give us the, the faithful heart of proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, as we approach, Lord God, Christmas. Lord God, help us to have the right mindsets, the right attitudes throughout this day. And let us truly hold this day with reverence in our hearts, Lord. We thank you, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. I hope to see you in worship tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.